So now we're going to talk about what we do when we multiply fractions. Um, I want to show you, well, I, I want to go through steps two, three, and four first, and then we'll go back to step one and see how that can save us some, some trouble later on. Um, so step number two uh, and step number three really look the same. So somebody just tell me in your own words, what do we do when we multiply fractions together? You don't need to write this down. I'm going to just put an example down here. But let's say we have something like 5 sevenths times 2 fifths. Okay, we're, we're, we're not going to do this example, but I just want to use it to kind of demonstrate what we're doing here. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to multiply 5 times 2 and get what? 10. All right, so up here, we can make that our step number 2 and just say multiply numerators. So we're going to multiply the numerators together. Then on the bottom, we multiply 7 times 5, and we get 35. So we could say there that we are multiplying denominators. Sorry. Okay, now once I do that, I get 10 over 35, and what do I need to do? I need to simplify. What number goes into 10 that also goes into 35? Five. So I can reduce by 5 here, and I get 2 over 7. All right, so the last thing we need to do is simplify. Now, we did this whole problem, and we skipped over the very first step, at least the first step that I have on here. Um, so we can multiply numerators together, we can multiply the denominators together, and we can simplify, and that's going to give us the answer. I want you to notice here, though, what did I simplify by? I reduced by 5, right? Well, what do you notice about the original problem down here? I'm going to get rid of all this. Um, to, to do this problem, we ended up reducing by 5 in the end. What do you think I could do first, before I do anything else, to save me from having to reduce by 5 later? Look at the problem. What could I do here to save me from having to reduce by 5 later? I can reduce by 5 now, right? Since I have a 5 in the numerator and a 5 in the denominator, I can reduce by 5 before I even start. Okay, so what, what that's saying that I can do is I can reduce any numerator with any denominator before I multiply. And what that could do is it can save me some working with really big numbers. All right. Either way, whether I do this first step or not, I'm going to get the right answer as long as I do everything correctly and simplify in the end. Um, but by doing this first step first, it's going to save me the headache of working with bigger numbers later on. All right. So we're going to look at some examples here. We'll do it both ways. And, and we'll see what it ends up looking like. All right, so our first example for multiplying fractions. We have 2 thirds times 5 sevenths. This is on the back of your notes again. Can I do that first step here? No. Can I reduce? Let, let's just check it out here. No. Um, two's in the numerator, so can I reduce the 2 with either the 3 or the 7? No. Because no. the only thing I would be able to reduce by is 2, but that doesn't go into 3 or 7. How about the 5 with the 3 or the 7? Can I reduce the 5 with the 3? No. Can I reduce the 5 with the 7? No. So I can't reduce any numerator with any denominator here. So I'm going to move on to the next one. The next step says multiply numerators together. What's 2 times 5? Okay. That's step 2. That's pretty easy, right? Step 3 says multiply denominators together. What's 3 times 7? 21. And the last step says we need to simplify. Can I simplify 10 over 21? No, there's nothing that goes into 10 that also goes into 21, so we're done. That one was easy enough, right? Okay, so the next one. I'm going to do this one two different ways. So we have 2 thirds times 3 fourths. Let's skip that first step. Let's pretend like we don't know that first step right now. We'll just go to step number 2, which says multiply the numerators. What's 2 times 3? 6. Okay, what's 3 times 4? 
12. All right, so that's step two and step three. Now we go to step four, which says simplify. Uh, can we simplify this? Yes. What number goes into six that also goes into 12? Okay, six is the biggest one, so we'll go ahead and reduce by six. We could also reduce by two, and we could also reduce by three if we wanted to. Uh, if we did either one of those, though, we'd have to do a little bit more work. All right, so we simplify those. What's 6 divided by 6? What's 12 divided by 6? 2. And we get 1 half. All right, so we multiply it across. We simplify. We get our answer. Now let's look at it a different way. Let's do that first step first. Multiply, any, or I'm sorry, reduce any numerator with any denominator. So does this 2 reduce with the 3? Does the 2 reduce with the 4? Yes. What goes into 2 that also goes into 4? 2. What's 2 divided by 2? What's 4 divided by 2? 4 divided by 2. 2. How about the 3? Can I reduce that 3 with the 2? No. Can I reduce the 3 with the 3? Yes. So what's going to happen when I do that? What do I reduce by? I'm going to reduce by 3. What's 3 divided by 3? 1. And what's 3 divided by 3? 1. Still 1. And now that we've simplified, now we can multiply across. On top, the numerators, what's 1 times 1? Okay, on the bottom, in the denominator, what's 1 times 2? So we get 1 half. Do we get the same thing? Yeah. Yeah. Now... For this particular problem, I don't think one way is necessarily any more work or any less work than the other way. Um, I think they both work equally well. So you can choose which way you want to do it with something like this. Okay? Here's where this method is going to be useful, though. When the numbers get big, if we try to multiply it first and then simplify, we're going to be simplifying some really big numbers. All right, we're going to have to multiply 12 times 15, which is 180. Don't write this down, please. So we get 180 on top, and on the bottom, 25 times 56 is going to be 1,400. And then we would have to reduce that fraction. Doesn't look like fun, does it? No. Now, you may not think the other way is very fun either, but it's going to be a lot easier than simplifying those big numbers. All right, so the first thing we want to do is we want to see if the 12 reduces with either the 25 or the 56. Does that 12 reduce with the 56? Yeah. Yes. How do I know the 12 and the 56 reduce? Because they're even. Yeah, they're both even. So since 12 and 56 are both even, we know we can reduce that. All right, so what is 12 divided by 2? 6. And what is 56 divided by 2? I'll give you a hint. It's 28. It's a nice hint, right? Um, now, let's, let's check to make sure we did that completely. Can the 6 and the 28 reduce still? Since they're both even, we know we can reduce that. So let's do that again. We're going to divide by 2. What's 6 divided by 2? 3. 3. What's 28 divided by 2? 14, right? Okay. Can I reduce the 3 and the 14 now? No. How about the 15 with the 14? 15 with the 14? No. How about the 15 with the 25? Yes. Okay, what goes into 15 that also goes into 25? 5. Reduce that by 5. What do we get on top? 3. What about the bottom? 5. Okay, can I reduce anything else? Can I reduce the 3 with the 3? Remember what that first step says. Reduce any numerator with any denominator. Do we have a numerator and a denominator here? No. If they're both on top, do not try to reduce it. Or if they're both on the bottom, don't try to reduce it. It has to be a top with a bottom. All right, so we can't simplify anymore, so let's go ahead and multiply it out. On top, what's 3 times 3? 9. On the bottom, 5 times 14. Anybody know? 70. Or somebody that was close. Now, I will tell you this. You are going to be allowed to use a calculator um, for those types of problems, um, but it's going to be a calculator that doesn't do fractions. 
So you're not going to be able to use the calculator to multiply the fractions. You are going to be able to use the calculator to do these types of computations, where, where you have to do like 5 times 40 maybe, um, or 56 divided by 2, and, and help you with that. Okay, so we get 9 over 70. One more example here. Now, this example looks really complicated, but I assure you it's not that complicated if, if we follow the steps um, and, and do that first step first. If we don't do the first step first, we're going to have some really big numbers, and it's going to be difficult.